Hello and welcome to this week's Spotlight. My name is Derek and we have something really special this week, the B&T KH9 Suppressed. So nestled amongst a beautiful lake outside Bern, Switzerland is a company called B&T and they make a lot of really high quality rifles, handguns, launchers, and things like this. What this basically is, is a special edition of the Gen 1 GHM-9. It has a few unique aspects that are bespoke for it, uh, but first we'll start with the most obvious, the suppressor. It must be purchased with the firearm, that's why it's a kit, but um, we'll go through a couple things here for you to break it down. When you buy it, we will be able to send you the firearm right to your FFL. You can go and transfer it right away and take possession of it. The suppressor, of course, you would have to file your Form 4 and wait for that to get done. Wait times on that can vary. A lot. I think right now as we film this, there's somewhere around the 10 month mark, but you will be able to take the gun home first. If you plan to use this while your suppressor is, is in an FA prison, you still can do that. So you'll want to pay attention to a couple things though. The first among which is when you get the firearm, it'll come with this sort of uh, uh, nut screw thing here it's actually a port cover because the base of the barrel and we'll show you this here in a moment is um, ported in the same way that like an mp5 sd is so you want to make sure that this cover is on those threads back here before you shoot it also if it were me because the barrel ends right here i would probably buy a hand stop and put it right there as well that way you don't have any hand forward motion like that not going to tell you what to do, I'm just going to let Darwin do his thing here. The can itself is a reduced back pressure suppressor. And if you haven't shot suppressed before, that is really nice to see because when you're shooting particularly handguns or pistol caliber blowback operated weapons like this, you do get a lot of pressure that bleeds back from the suppressor through the barrel and then out this port here and then into your face. And with uh, gas operated rifles, you do get a similar sort of uh, puff of sort of hot carbon and that, that, can, that can irritate your eyes. And if the gun's really dirty, uh, any, any buildup of carbon can kind of flake off and hit, and hit you in the face as well. So the fact that this really doesn't add that much back pressure does make the shooting of this much more enjoyable. The porting of the barrel, I'll show you here in a second. First, we're gonna take off the handguard and there are two screws that you would need to remove to do so. The one is up top right here. The second is on the bottom side. It is a T20 Torx and luckily they're not on there super mega tight so they can be taken off in just a matter of moments. There we go. Okay, now we can see the barrel and you can quite obviously see, like I said, that it is ported here. Now with the handguard and this port cover off, you will see the holes here. And uh, this is just grease on it. Um, B and C said to just leave it be. There's no need to mess about with it. So leave it alone. Now the idea behind this is as the bullet passes down the barrel, some gas is bled off of that, and that does two things. It helps to make the suppressor nice and efficient, but also it does bleed some of that power off that charge. So the bullet's not gonna be coming out here as high velocity as if these ports were not here. To that point, um, most 115 grain nine will still be subsonic out of this. Some of your hotter loads, your plus P's and that sort of thing, probably gonna be supersonic, but uh, standard 115 should be sub and anything 124 and, and up will definitely be subsonic. And subsonic is nice because that supersonic crack that the bullet makes as it flies down range is considerably loud. So if you're really trying to be quiet, you'll want to make sure that you're not using plus P loads or just shoot a heavier bullet. It looks like it looks it looks like a grease gun. Like a grease, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it feels like a grease gun. Like yeah, like a, a, like a, was that an M three? Like an enlarged Tech Nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Is it is it wrong to have an urge to just huck this thing like a potato masher? I would want to throw that through a window. <laughs> the thing, it wouldn't break the window. Feel, feel how light this thing is. I'll have to look up the weight and put it on the website, but that thing is... It's like, I know it's not it plastic, as, but it, it feels like plastic. It weighs as much as a grasshopper, dude. Right? Yeah. How, how awesome is this? And then on she goes. Okay, that's enough on the suppressor. Moving back to the handguard, as you can see, pick rail top and bottom with 3M lock sections per side as well. Moving back from the first Picatinny rail, we have a Tommy gun style charging handle here. It is reciprocating and it does not have a bolt lock. As you can just see there, this is an empty mag and I'm able to rack it quite happily like that. Uh, onto the magazine, it does come with a single 30 rounder. I do like this style over the Glock mags because I find them easier to load and easier to insert into the weapon. Also, the mag releases are ambidextrous. The, the one up here is a little bit of a reach to get to with your finger, but it is drop free. The second one on the left side of the gun is right here. So depending on your reload style, you would probably do a technique like that. And then uh, it, it also has a decocker, which is a bit strange for something like this. I will admit it is a bit stiff when you first get it, but it does loosen up a little bit over time. And uh, there we go. When you do that, you'll see a little window right here that will have a green sort of flag in there so that you know that it is decocked. Now the this brings us to our next point, the trigger, which is normally a bit of a long pull, but very, very smooth. Double action, it's gonna be what you think it is, pretty heavy, but also pretty smooth. Moving up to the top of the receiver here, we do see this circular piece. This is actually the bolt catch. So you would bring the bolt back, press that, and then there you go. Like I said, there's no bolt release, so to recharge the gun, just have to do one of those deals. Now normally, it is what you would call a single action, I guess. It's not always that, that big ass heavy trigger, but um, in normal sort of single action mode, the trigger pull is very long, but it is very, very smooth and light. And the reason for that is why it's so long is because it doesn't have a manual safety. So that is one of those extra safety mechanisms that you would put into this. It's more of a, you're pulling the trigger. Are you sure you want to pull the trigger? And then yes. You would compare this to the Gen 2 GHM-9, which has a much shorter, crisper pull, but it does have a manual safety. Just in case there's a little bit of confusion on this trigger here. Now we'll, we'll uh, cock it, okay? And the trigger pull, nice and smooth. And then off she goes, light pull. Let it, we're gonna rack it again. Now we're gonna decock it. Now it's on a double action, so it's a heavier, but still pull, but still smooth pull. Release it, now it would shoot, cycle. Now you're back to what would be called a single action setting on the trigger where it's nice and smooth and light. And of course, up top on the back, see some pick rails as well. If I were to set this up, in a way that I would prefer. I'd include the iron sights here that do come with it in the traditional orientation. I'd probably actually put an optic at the rear section of the front rail, maybe a surefire light on the side with a switch on top. That would be a good way to run something like this. But uh, back here, you could put a red dot on it, but uh, I do advise if you do that, just experiment with putting it up front because I personally find it a bit easier when the optic is up here versus you know this close to your face. Now, moving back, we do see a collapsing brace, collapsing stock adapter piece here. We'll have those pieces on our website so you know which exact ones to get. It is not the same one as the GHM-9. It is a specific one for the KH-9. We'll link in the description, that way you know which exact one to get. So overall, it's a really unique, high quality weapon. I do, I particularly like the suppressor on it because it's so short, it's so light, you're really not adding much to the overall size. And the fact that it's that uh, reduced back pressure suppressor is very nice as well. And the versatility of something like this is very good. You can put all manner of lights and lasers and such on it 
and the mags are pretty available. They're not uh, too, too expensive. So overall, it's a pretty neat kit. Uh, we're only going to be getting a certain number of these though. So if you really want to get your hands on one, I would not delay. So if you have any further questions on it, feel free to give us a call. We'd be happy to talk to you. Comment below what, what your thoughts are. Um, I mean, personally, I think if we're gonna nitpick, um, some might say that not having a safety is this or that. I really don't mind not, not having a, a manual safety. The trigger's very nice. I do dig the uh, top charging handle. You don't really see much of that these days, so I do like that. But let us know below what you think. Finally, please give us a like and subscribe. We'll be having new videos out every week, so, you, so you'll definitely not wanna miss that. Also find us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next time.